and welcome to NFL News Update, where touchdowns meet headlines. Stay in the game with the freshest NFL updates. This is your quick dive into football fervor. The season of giving is here as we wind down the 2023 NFL season. We've already given you winners and losers, highs and lows, sleepers and busts, and a few moments to forget. But we hope to keep giving you more of the positives to look back on as the season enters its final weeks. If you need to scratch that fantasy itch with your season-long league coming to an end, look no further than our FanDuel DFS lineup for Week 14, which will ideally provide us with enough cash to boost the economy this holiday season. Before we break down our picks and strategy, here are the most notable scoring rules for FanDuel. Minshew Mania is eyeing a postseason spot and has the Colts with a 7-5 record heading into the final few weeks of the season. Now he gets a Bengals team that's limping to the finish thanks to Joe Burrow's thumb injury that cost him the season. The Colts are a motivated bunch in a tight AFC South, while evidence continues to mount that they knocked the Shane Steichen higher out of the park. Minshew is a capable fantasy starter, as shown by his 312 yards and two TDs last week, and he's certainly worth another DFS flyer in a week that offers very few worthwhile value options. Mixon has been forced to step up without Burrow under center, doubling as a runner and receiver for Cincinnati. Jake Browning has relied heavily upon the veteran RB, evidenced by Mixon's two touchdowns on Monday night against the Jaguars. Burrow's injury has made Mixon arguably the Bengals' top fantasy option now. We'll gladly insert the RB into the lineup in a good matchup against the Indianapolis team, that's had some issues defending RBs, notably getting torched by Derrick Henry and Tyja Spears one week ago. It's week 14, and there is a Jets player in this DHS lineup. How bad can it get? The good news is that it can always get worse, and Hall's role in this offense makes him a worthy dart throw in this lineup. He continues to see plenty of carries and a big role in the passing game. While the offense can't score, the volume is there against a Texans team that has struggled to defend RBs out of the backfield. If the Jets manage to find the end zone for the first time since sliced bread was invented, Hall has a good chance to do it, considering it's borderline insane to include a Jets player in any DFS lineup. That means we might be one of the few who actually roster him, which could help our cause. Evans hauled in 6 of 8 targets for 82 yards and a score last time he saw the Falcons, and he's only gotten better putting together another great season for Tampa as Baker Mayfield's top option in the passing game. The incredible target share gives us no reason to think that won't continue. Imagine saying back in the summer that the Minshew-Pittman stack would be one of the best in fantasy this season. It's a wild reality, but also one that continues to fly under the radar more often than not. Pittman is coming off back-to-back -back games of at least 100 yards and he just put up a season-high 16 against the Titans. That volume doesn't grow on trees, and there are no signs of the WR slowing down anytime soon as the Colts push for a playoff spot. Samuel rewarded us with a big performance against the Eagles, backing up all the talking he did since losing in the NFC Championship game last season. There's no reason to believe that can't continue against the same Seahawks team that he carved up on Thanksgiving. Samuel has historically feasted against Seattle. And with the Niners eyeing that top spot in the NFC, we should expect that to be the case again. The Chargers' offense is tough to watch right now. Between injuries and drops, we can't determine what is more maddening on a week-to-week -week basis, but Everett has a great matchup in Week 14, one that we've continued to target quite often this year. Everett hasn't posted 50 yards or more in a game this season, but this should be his best chance to do that plus have a good shot at a TD. We'll take the discount for someone who should outperform his DFS salary. MetLife Stadium promises to be the site of yet another bad weather game, and all that rain means we'll be seeing plenty of the RBs on Sunday. Pierce appears to have regained the RB1 spot from Devin Singletary, evidenced by his 15 carries last week to just 8 for his teammate. Efficiency has been a problem for the sophomore back but the Jets present another decent matchup for RB to find their footing. With an ugly game on tap, Pierce should have more than enough opportunities to deliver from a fantasy standpoint. The Panthers are and have been a complete disaster this year, only shielded by the fact that they play in Charlotte rather than the Boston and New York areas. They have a TB who can't compete with the extreme lack of talent up and down the roster, 
a lame duck coaching staff, and countless other factors. They're 1-11 and are playing a divisional rival that, despite being 5-7, is somehow not out of the playoff race. New Orleans' offense is a mess, but the defense should be primed to bounce back after a rough Week 13. This year, we're also listing our favorite DFS plays on Superdraft. For those unfamiliar, Superdraft's DFS scoring involves point multipliers as opposed to traditional salary-capped or tiered contests. A winning lineup will likely feature a strong mix of stud fantasy contributors with 1x1.6x boosts, as well as matchup-based sleepers with larger multipliers. Each player is assigned a scoring multiplier based on their value as determined by Superdraft. Users can roster any player in their lineup with no restrictions.